Well, Dick, it's great seeing you again. Yeah. L.A. Roadster Show is a good place to get together and uh, oh. go over old war stories, isn't it? Uh, you can't do better than this. You, uh, you were involved with a lot of the uh, the best known customizers of the era of the day, weren't you? Especially uh, you and George. Oh, me and George. George and I met in Detroit. I was telling Christy a, a story. I He had brought the Aztec, Jane Mansfield's car, and a Porsche that Dean Jeffries had done. They brought him back to Detroit for the show. And um, I had a 48 Mercury Coupe. I had chopped it, body sectioned it, and channeled it, and painted it black. And I blocked on that thing for two months before I put paint on it. George I mean, it was so straight, you couldn't oh, believe it. I know, it's getting... George came in and he, down the sides, you know how they do. Down the sides, right away. He said, did you do this? I said, yes, sir, I did. He says, you know what? If you ever get to California, I can use somebody like you. I went home and told my wife, I said, we're going to California. She laughed at me, and I had a GI home that I paid $5 for. Michigan would allow this. A guy came in from Florida that was going to work at Ford Motor Company and he needed a house. And he had a brand new Ford station wagon. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll trade you. I was sitting in a bar. I'll trade you. What? I said, <laughs> you give me the car, I'll give you the house. So anyway, I got to California and uh, George put me to work and he's been using me Using me and using me. Are you are you able to count up the the cars that you've built for George? Forty two as of yesterday. Forty two as of yesterday. Uh -huh. and that's not including the other cars that I've done. And I can remember the Futura had stainless steel handmade bumpers front and rear. They were made in Italy. Hey Jack. I took them off and threw them in a dumpster. Mm. The center of the canopy, the center part, not the front windshield or the back one, when you'd grab the door handle, it would come up like this. And then you could open the door and get in, shut the door, and it'd come down on you. Who needs that? Batman's going to jump in. Boop! In the dumpster. <laughs> I think of that all the time now, and I go, oh, gee whiz. Forty-some cars for George. And probably one of the trickiest one I ever did was called the Surf Woody. And an artist drew the pictures, you know. I didn't draw the pictures. But I, I was on the cover of Rod and Custom magazine with George, showing how I made all the conduit tubing up to put the skins over, you know, how to skin the thing and whatnot. If you had been affected by someone that you know, it went over like it's had a storm went through the place. They shipped it over to Hawaii and they had surfers and surf wagons and parades with it and everything. It run real good. It had a 289 double Paxton charged motor in it. Paxton Motors sent the motor over to us. Brand new Porsche. I know, every time they do that, it scares the shit out of me. And I. I I built the damn thing. The last time we were together was just a few weeks ago at the L.A. Roadster Show, and we were talking about a mutual friend of ours that had passed, and that was Bill Cushenberry. And now here we are together again, and unfortunately we're talking about another friend of ours that has passed, and that's Dick Dean. What can you tell us about your relationship with Dick? And I brought Dick in from Detroit way back in the 60s. And uh, he was a craftsman, and he loved being a part of cars, and I had some great, great cars we did for him that he was able to really put together. I, you can't even count them. 
the 60 decade was one of our strongest. We did cars for Detroit, we did cars for the Ford Custom Car Caravan, we were on the World of Wheels and the Autoramas, and Dicko was right there with us. We got one little old car here, it's called the Surf Woody. It was a very famous car, and uh, it also made the cover of Hot Rod Magazine. And you can see Dicko here in his young days, golly. And uh, Gosh, this is, is how we had to build him. Dick. Yep, that's us together. And uh, he would frame it all out. Of course, in those days, we didn't have MIG welders and ro English rollers. We had uh, electrical conduit pipe. Yes. And he would shape the conduit pipe, like you see there. Uh -huh. And then he would shape the metal with whatever we had to make a 20 gauge coal roll so we could form it. And uh, Dicko could put it together, and uh, the end result is just, just absolutely, just terrific. I mean, uh, he was extremely fast too, wasn't he? Yeah, Dicko was uh, was not a slouch. He didn't uh, when he got into a project, he just dug into it, and we'd run through it. You can see when we lay it out on the drawing board, we'd get together, and he'd start forming something. We'd get together again, and then he started sheet metal. And, and it was uh, it was a team, just a team. And one of the biggest happiest things I've seen that really made me also very happy was that Dicko, when he became ill, he trained his son. As far as Dicko is concerned, we were we're going to miss him tremendously, but at least he uh, Keitho is going to carry on for him. So mm -hmm. he's not going to be gone away from us. He'll be. Uh, He'll still be popping up every once in a while. Whatever show we go to, he'll always be there with us. He mentioned in the uh, interview there at the LA Roadster show that he had just counted up the cars he had done just for you, and he said he was up to 42. Yeah. And I would say so. I would say so because in that 60 decade was the strongest decade of really pioneering, not only customizing, but into a different plateau. That means concept cars, show cars, experimental cars, mm -hmm. ideas, magazines. So he was just a goer like us. I was able to put, we had a good team together that was putting the cars together and he was able to administrate a lot of that and uh, that was uh, you know, a fun part. Mm -hmm. Even with his participation in the, in the Batmobile and the Monsters, that was all in the 60s. Yeah. All those great movie cars, uh, the uh, Beverly Hillbillies and the Green Hornet, he was instrumental of design, of building the Green Hornet for uh, Dean Jeffries, Jeffries uh -huh. and also the Monkey Mobile, he built that for Dean Jeffries, and uh, so he was very strong in every capacity of what he did. Well, George, I really Thank appreciate you. this Thank opportunity you. to talk about De Dean. Carl, good morning, Gene. How yeah. are you? I'm fantastic. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with Dick over the years? Well, you know, in the very early years, I didn't know him very well, and, and of course, all of us were kind of in competition with each other, and, you know, George and, and Bill Hines and different people, you know, and uh, so we weren't real close. Uh, but as the years, you know, went on, then we, we got closer and closer. And in fact, I just went and visited Dick uh, about two months ago, and then, of course, we saw him there at the LA Roaster Show. And in fact, Dick gave me a model. Uh, <clears throat> this is the model kit. Oh, the Shalico. Shalico. Yes. And yes. That's, uh, you know, probably Dick's most famous car that he actually got recognition for. Right. And uh, because he's he's built so many cars in the background, you know, and uh, and right. never got recognition. You know, he built many, many, many cars for George. Uh, he was a nice builder. I mean, really creative and fast. You know, he was known for getting in there and getting it done. Absolutely, in <laughs> record time. Yeah. Quick. So he and he chopped uh, a lot of Mercs. You know, uh, I, we we talked about that. I think he chopped fifty some some Mercuries. Incredible. You know? And I I haven't kept track of how many I've chopped, but I'm probably running a close second. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that. you've probably chopped 150. <laughs> so that was a lot of amazing. Fun.